from New York, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Uh, huh? And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. Here the radio talk show is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. This story from the Associated Press. See if you can relate to uh, any of the content of this story. Dateline Pittsburgh. The ex-girlfriend of Pittsburgh Steelers wide receiver Cedric Wilson says he encouraged her to commit suicide during events leading to her armed standoff at his home last month. Wilson denied the accusation through his lawyer. By the way, Why should he deny it if it's true? I mean, if it is true, is that against the law? Seriously. The story continues. Police withdrew charges of aggravated assault and reckless endangerment against the woman, Lindsay Paulat, on Friday. But she waived her right to a preliminary hearing and will stand trial on a new felony charge, discharging a firearm in an occupied structure. After the hearing, Paul Atch said Wilson urged her to shoot herself after he left his apartment. So you understand what happened. The guy did not threaten to shoot her. The guy was not even there. He left. And she says he urged her to shoot herself. After he left. Says here in the story, she stayed in the apartment and later held police at bay for about 12 hours. She surrendered in the early hours of January 20th and was taken to a mental health facility, authorities said. Now here comes her defense. Paul Ad told KDKA-TV the following. She said, I had called him and said... You hurt me so bad, you make me want to die. And he said, The gun is loaded. Go get it and kill yourself. Paul had told the station I repeatedly called him and he kept telling me to kill myself. How many of you have done this? I'm not kidding. How many of you have done this? I have told the story of one of the Mrs. Tom Likases. I'm not going to say which one. She knows who she is. And she does listen from time to time. One of the Mrs. Tom Likases waited until 2.30 p.m. And in Los Angeles, my show has always started at about 3 o'clock. So I leave home about 2.30. And one of the Mrs. Tom Likases took a carving knife, went into my bathroom, locked the door, and said, when you get home, be dead. And my response to that was this. Well, have at it. I gotta go. My guess, you'll be here when I get back. By the way, she was. It says here, Wilson did not speak with the Associated Press, 
but answered questions relayed by his attorney, Paul Goltz. Goltz said Wilson didn't speak with Paulette by phone until after police got involved trying to quell the standoff. Very smartly, if this is true, it says here those conversations were monitored by police. So he knew if he got involved in a pissing match with her, that the police would assume he was an abuser of some kind, so he waited until the police could listen in on the calls, which I think is good advice for all you guys out there who've gotten involved with a psychotic bitch. Those conversations, it says here, were monitored by police who urged Wilson to be conciliatory to end the dispute, Gold said. Goltz, this is the attorney for Cedric Wilson, the football player, said he's a victim of her abusive behavior and it hasn't stopped to this very moment. He didn't give her the gun. She knew where it was. About the only thing that both sides agree on is that Paul had fired two shots after Wilson left the apartment. Paul Ad's attorney, Michael DeRiso, said the first shot was fired when Paul Ad was trying to uncock the gun. Well, <laughs> what is she doing touching a gun in the first place? Says here the second was fired accidentally into the ceiling after Paul Ad's mother came to the apartment to try to calm her after Wilson left, DeRiso said. Paul Ad of Fawn Township in Pennsylvania did not immediately return calls. And the local police chief was not available for comment. That is a fascinating story. Because you know what? I have no patience at all for anybody who's such an attention whore that she has to threaten to harm herself in any way, much less kill herself. The minute somebody threatens to kill themselves, that's the end of the relationship for me. I mean, if you think I'm abusing you, what are you doing still here? Go. If you think I'm a jerk, go. If you think I'm verbally abusive, get out. Nobody has a gun to your head. Put a gun to your own head. The minute somebody threatens to kill themselves, I'm out. The minute somebody threatens to disfigure themselves or harm themselves in any way, I'm out. There will be no drama. There will be no calls to 911. That is when I'm going. Period. I don't understand why anybody stays through this kind of thing. Is there anything wrong with what this football player did? I mean, certainly staying with the woman long enough for it to get to this point. There's something wrong with that. He should have gotten out a lot earlier. But if a woman says, I'm going to kill myself, do we owe it? To her and say, oh, no, don't do that. Let me get you some help, honey. Anybody who threatens to kill themselves, that's it. Get out. Don't stay. Don't bargain. Don't try to work on your relationship. Don't hang around. Don't offer to get her medication. Don't uh, forget it. It's time to go. It's time to to go. Right? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Tom, you are a god. You are my higher power, my friend. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's The Tom Likas Show. Thank you for tuning in. I'm in New York, and the cough button does not work. I'm going to press it right now. Don't work. So I have to turn the mic. That worked. <laughs> All right, one 800 tom is our telephone number. Let's go to your calls. We're talking about uh, Cedric Wilson, who plays for the Pittsburgh Steelers. His girlfriend says that he urged her to kill herself. Well, that doesn't excuse any of her crazy behavior. So I'm wondering if you had to deal with this kind of crazy behavior and why you deal with it. Robert, hello. Yeah, how you doing? How you doing? I'm all right. 
Hey, brother, I'm just calling in. I'm just letting you know that uh, I'm with the girl that's kind of nuts. She, uh, you know, whenever we get to arguing, it starts Hey, watch your mouth. Why? Wait, wait, stop. This is the radio. Oh, okay, sorry. Speak like a gentleman. All right, check it out. Well, when we start arguing, she starts uh, hitting her face and crap. And then I get kind of worried about it because, she, you know, if she's in her face and crap, you know, I'm worried about the cops coming and jick me out. Well, then why are you still there? Uh, you know, I'm just still there, brother. Why? Been, been there, you know, it's going on 10 years. That doesn't but, excuse you know, it. Why, but, why, but, why, why, why are you still there? But it's just recently it's just started happening. I don't care right. why it started happening. Why are you still there? Uh, I don't know. I just got kids with the brother. Why'd you do that? Why'd I do that? Because, you yeah. know, I was young, about 23. All right, but you have one kid. Why did you make the same mistake again? Well, I got one kid. I mean, I knocked her up when I was like 23, and it's already So that means you now. should compound the mistake by having more kids? Nah, not no more, but, I mean, it's just I'm ready to skate out on her now. I think you should. Yeah, possibly. What are you waiting for? I'm not waiting for nothing. I'm I'm just saying. I just want to let... So you're on the way out the door right now? Well, I just want people out there to know that, you know, when when your women start getting all nuts on you, you know, just... uh, when they start, you know, flipping out and start hitting themselves in their, in their face, you know, and, and start letting you know that, you know, they're going to call the cops on you and saying that you're hitting them, you know, that ain't right. Because they'll come and first mark on their face, where are you going? You're going to jail, right? Yeah, but uh, how are you in a position to advise others? You're still there. What's that? I said, how are you in a position? To advise others, you are still there. No, but I said I'm, I'm ready to get out. The hey, it, next time I'm, I'm hanging up on you. <laughs> this is a radio right. show. You can't speak like that on the radio. Yeah, I know that. All right, all right, Tom. You know what? So I'm why just... haven't you left already? Well, you know, I'm just. Kind of uh, sticking around for the kids, you know. Yeah, well, you might be going to jail soon the next time she does something like that. Nah, because there there ain't gonna be no proof. There ain't gonna be no red. They red don't knuckles. need. There, there's, they there's don't no, uh, need proof. They don't. I, son, let me tell you something. I was arrested once on a domestic violence charge. I did not commit domestic violence. Okay. They don't need evidence they will put you in jail it's that simple and i was there yeah that's right so why are you still there well i'm ready to skate brother when probably in the next i don't know week two weeks you have no plan to do that What's that? You do not have a plan to leave. Well, I probably will, brother. No, no. Where, where are you going? I want the specifics. <laughs> you know what, Tom? I'm just, you know what? I'm just calling to let everybody know. All right, when, uh, you know what? You're not, you're not in a position to be letting everybody know anything because you don't even follow your own advice. Jesus. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. And when a woman says she's going to kill herself, do we guys have any responsibility? Just get out. Hank on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Hank. I have a story that happened to me about seven years ago, when I was back in Asia. Some some crazy bitch, where uh, I was dating. And then she just tried to kill herself, right? She swallowed some pills, and then 
her her friend called me like two or three o'clock in the morning. She told me that my girlfriend was in 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 the hospital, right? Uh, and then I told her, like,、um, give the phone to her. Yeah, and then I told her that you know what? If that if you want to do that kind of thing, you do it right. Either you jump off a building or put a bullet in your head. That's right. That's it. And then, and, and, and that's by、right. the way, let me guess: she never killed herself, right? No, no. When the person says that they're going to kill themselves, the, they mostly like、um, wants a、uh, pension. You know what I mean? I think when people say they're going to kill themselves, that's when they don't. They kill themselves when they don't tell you. Uh huh. That's true. True that. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Thank you.、Um, can you、it. blow me up? Ah,、uh, yes, I can. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. It's Sierra on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Love your show. Hi. Thank you. I want to tell you,、um, this happens to women too. I had a boyfriend that kept telling me he was going to kill himself every time I tried to break up with him. I finally told him, "Can you mind doing it in the bathroom? Because it's hard to get the blood out of the carpet." And I left. <laughs> I don't think you owe it to anybody to tell them, "Oh, don't do it. Don't kill yourself." No, you got to start putting that drama in my life. I'm putting it right back in your face. Exactly. Exactly. So keep up the good work. Thank you, Sierra. Appreciate the call. It's Jay on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Dad. How you doing, son? I'm doing all right. Long time, first time. Thank you. I、uh, yeah, I had a, a girl I was dating a while back in my twenties.、Um, she was just one in the bullpen, and、uh, she kept wanting to be more. And finally, I got fed up with her asking for a commitment and stuff that wasn't what I was about. And、uh, she called. Well, actually,、uh, I worked next door to where she worked, and、um, her、uh, her her boss came over one day and said that she hadn't shown up for a couple of days, and didn't know where she was. And I said, No, I wasn't talking to her much anymore. And、uh, next thing I knew, I got a call from her, and、uh, she just said, Oh, I just tried to off myself. And I said, Well, you know, what do you mean? She said, I just took all the pills in my medicine chest, you know, and I've I've been I've been kind of passed out for for a day or so here. And I said, "Well, did you call, you know, an ambulance or anything?" She's like, "No, I, I think, you know, life isn't worth living. Same old sad drama stuff that you always get." So I,、uh, I called,、uh, hung up with her, called a friend of mine up, the psychologist, and she said exactly what you're saying. This, this is just an attention-getting,、uh, attention-grabbing、uh, mechanism. And the best thing for me to do was to call 911 on her behalf, get a get a paramedic out there, make sure she was in the hospital, and then just never talk to her again. Never pick up the phone if she called, and that's, that's pretty much what I ended up doing. I think that's what you need to do. And by the way, I would not even call for help for anybody. I would just get the hell out, done. Yeah, yeah. I think that might have been a good idea too, because、uh, you know, who knows if she's going to pull this on somebody else, right? Maybe just let nature take its course. Well, I, I think that's the way to go. I, you know, whatever happens, happens. You can't blame me. Right. Exactly. And the fact is. She's just trying to manipulate people. It had nothing to do with,、uh, you know, one commit suicide or how depressed she was. She just wanted to try and manipulate me to stay in the relationship, and I'm not going to play those games. Absolutely. Thanks, Tom. You blew me up. Here you go. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Scott on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. I'm not even going to ask how you're doing because you sound like you're doing great. I am doing great. I want to let you know that this really, this topic really speaks to me. About 11 years ago or so, I was dating this gal and uh, uh, found out she was doing drugs. Found out I went up to her apartment, she had a guy coming out, and I said, you know,、uh, this, this is this is it, this is it, and.、Uh, So I gave myself about three days, and I took the Likas 101 and called her and said, "You know what? It, it's not happening." And、uh, she right there said, "I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to kill myself tonight, right now." 
uh, I felt un- I felt so low. I felt like I was responsible. I f- she put she put me right where she wanted me on the lowest part of this earth, and and it took me honestly, it took me about three hours to uh, to realize after me begging her not to not to do anything like that because of because of my nature. My nature is a good guy, and I uh, finally about three hours into it, I said, you know. This really isn't about me, is it? And uh, just just go ahead and do it. Just do it. And uh, her tone changed so quick. It wasn't even... She flipped, and I just beat myself up for going through three hours of feeling like the scum of the earth to uh, to realizing she was just manipulating me and trying to get me to, uh, to, to, to care for her or do something that, uh, that showed that I, I cared for her and I... I could kick myself, Tom. Outrageous. Unbelievable. And, and what, what I learned from that is once I started dating, I started dating these other people, and once they started pulling that garbage, I mean, I mean any type of tantrum, I'm, I'm see ya, see ya, gotta go, because I know where it's going, and I know if it, I never want to be on that, that uh, roller coaster again. And no way. One little comment of as far as, uh, Telling me that oh uh, you're you're controlling you're abusive see ya I've I've heard this before and and you know look I'll go get counseling if I need it but you got emotional problems got to go yeah it's kind of hard for someone to call you controlling if you say goodbye yeah how controlling yeah. is that yeah see you later unbelievable Tom I just I just can't imagine the thing about it was you go so low you go so low emotionally. Because you don't realize what you're in, and and they put you through this uh, 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 um, guilt trip, and it's the ultimate guilt trip. This is not little guilt trips because you you came home late, or you, this is the ultimate death. I, you don't feel like you could, you don't feel like you could live at all. I mean, you don't feel like you could live a, a healthy life if you know that someone killed themselves after you broke up with them. You just feel so low, and. Uh, Unbelievable, Tom. I would yeah. not feel low. You know what? I would not feel low. You're right. Uh, you're right. The first time I felt low. After that, knock yourself out. Like like the caller before said, uh, if you're gonna do it, do it right. You know, there should they should make a manual on how to uh, how to do that so that they can get it right if they really want it right. I'm sure they're out there. I'm sure those manuals are out there. So you don't think that the football player uh, for the Pittsburgh Steelers, Cedric Wilson, you don't think he made a mistake? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. She was trying to put him. She was trying to put him as low as he could get, and uh, he wouldn't go for it. He wouldn't go for it. He he just wised up and said, "Do it. You know where it's at. You know how to do it." And uh, the uh, the proof is in the pudding. She didn't do it right. She didn't do I, it. I, so, I, I think you're right. There she is now answering questions from police and holding people at bay, allegedly. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to, uh, look at all these calls, Matt. Matt, you're on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Matt. How you doing? And I do care. I'm doing great. All right. I got a quick story for you. I won't take up too much of your time. Uh, By the way, it's an honor to be on your show. I know. (laughs) Well, uh, anyways, about six years ago, uh, when I was about a junior, sophomore in high school, I went to I went to this party, and I ended up getting you know pretty trashed, and I ended up making out with this uh, this uh, pretty hefty fat girl, and uh, pretty much since then, like a, a couple days later. She would swear that we're boyfriend and girlfriend, like, try and be all over me and stuff. And, you know, I pretty much told her, hey, no, you know, dude, I was drunk. We're at a party, you know, whatever. So uh, she ended up writing me this really long, drawn-out letter about how she, oh, I'm going to kill myself if we don't go out. I can't live without you and blah, blah, blah. I'm going to kill myself. So, you know, I didn't really know how to take that. So pretty much... I went to the I went to the counselor's office and I said, uh, you might want to read this. Pretty much just laughed at it, you know. Here you go. And since then, I never saw her again. Her parents took her out of school or something. I don't know what happened to her. Never saw her again. Wow. Just a, yeah, just a pretty wild story for you, you know. It it happens, and I feel bad for the guys it happens to. 
And uh, just another shout-out real quick. Uh, all the guys out there, listen to Tom. He knows what he's talking about. I listen to him all the time. He's awesome. Thank you so and, much. Uh, Matt. That's all I got to say. So uh, can you blow me up, Tom? You know I can. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. This is Christina on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi. How are you? Doing okay. Good. Um, well, I've listened to you for quite a while now, um, and my gosh, you've helped me so much. Um, anyway, Tom, I just, uh, when I was 23, 10 years ago, now I'm 33, I was dating this guy and I had caught him cheating. And so I said it was over, you know, um, we're just going to call it quits. Um, we went to bed that night and, you know, he's like, um, well, if I can't have you, then nobody's going to have you. And, you know, and you'll feel, so, you'll feel so sorry in the morning. And I'm like, okay, well, yeah, whatever, you know. Uh, so he goes to the bathroom, comes back, and he says, tell my mom I love her, tell my son I love him, and I love you so much. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And he goes, well, you'll see when you when you go to the bathroom. And I'm like, okay. So I went to the bathroom, and there's a bottle, a bottle of uh, Tylenol PM, noticing that it was almost empty. And I'm like, did he take all these? So I went back, and I go, did you take all these Tylenol PM pills? And he goes, well, what do you think? And I was like, oh, my God. So I just I got him in the car. You know, I said, let's go. Let's go to the hospital. Took him to the hospital. One of the psych nurses came in, and she's like, oh, he's going to be fine. He's just going to have a really massive headache the next day. And she goes, next time, you know, make sure you try something different, more potent than that, you know. But he's going to really feel stupid. He's going to have a really bad headache in the morning. So he may want to take regular Tylenol in the morning. I was just like, you know what? I I thought it only happened. I thought only girls did this kind of stuff, but you know, I guess guys can, you know, do stupid things too. By the way, what is lamer than trying to kill yourself with Tylenol PM? With Tylenol PM, out of all things, <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> and they, I mean, I thought, how stupid! I was just like laughing all the way. I was like, okay, so. I dropped him off, you know, they said, well, they're going to hold him overnight. And I go, okay, I'm going to go home. I want to go to sleep. And, uh, you know, they called me, do you want to come pick him up? And I go, no, nah, I'll have somebody else call him because I'm not dealing with this. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay. I, I find that hard to believe. And how lame. Tylenol PM. Ooh. Out of all things, Tylenol PM. I mean, you know, it's just going to put you to sleep for a while. <laughs> I'm going to eat 100 Milky Ways. I'm killing myself. What a Tylenol PM. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Outrageous. Uh, yeah, that's something I will never, ever, ever forget. <laughs> I have a feeling I won't forget it either. Tom, Tom. Like this. Like this. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Do you have kids? By design, I do not. You don't? By design. By design? Yes. By dictionary, stupid bitch. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show from New York City. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. We're talking about Cedric Wilson. Wide receiver for the Pittsburgh Steelers. His ex-girlfriend says he encouraged her to commit suicide. Oh, yes. She said uh, that uh, she had said to him, you hurt me so bad you make me want to die. And he said, the gun is loaded. Go get it and kill yourself. What did he do wrong there? What did he do wrong? 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. This is Patrick on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing, buddy? Great. Long time, first time. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I had a, uh, a situation like this uh, about six months ago. Um, had a long distance thing going on, I know, strike one. Uh, but I told her from the beginning that, you know, it's a long distance thing, and if uh, – if I find anyone closer, somebody else closer, uh, you know, that uh, to expect it. And, uh, you know, it was cool. We had an understanding. 
Uh, long story short, you know, we've had a, we had, you know, we broke up a few times, stopped talking a few times here and there, and, uh, you know, she'd say things like, you know, I can't live without you, or, you know, I'll kill myself without, you know, without you in my life. And, you know, I've heard things like that before with ex-girlfriends and, you know, didn't take it to the heart. Uh, the last time we got into one of those fights and, you know, broke up and we we're on the phone and she said the same things and I was just like, yeah, 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 I've heard it before. And, uh, you know, hung up on her and that was it. And, uh, basically the next morning I get a call from the, uh, the local, her local, uh, police department and, uh, they told me that, uh, you know, she had passed. What is the moral of the story? You know, she hadn't passed. She killed herself. Right, right. You pass when you're 87 years old, you've got Alzheimer's disease, and they give you that one last shot, and you slowly drift off to dreamland. Then you're passing away. She killed herself. Right, right. Now, why should you be concerned about that? You clearly are. Yeah, I mean, of course, you know, I, I felt responsible, guilty, you know. Why did you I feel was... that way? What's that? Why did you feel that way? Uh, well, I mean, it was, uh, I guess I was the cause of it, um, the reason. No, you were not, no, I mean, no, no, you weren't. She was sick. That was the cause of it. Right. That was also why you broke up with her. Yeah, that's true. So why would you be in any way responsible? Uh, just be, you know, being human, I guess, you uh, you feel that way. I, I don't agree that it's right. If somebody did that to me, if somebody said to me, I'm going to kill myself if you don't come back, and, and then I didn't come back and they killed themselves, why is that my fault? Yeah, I, I agree with you. I mean, now now that, you know, that I've been thinking, you know, I've thought about it and, and all that and, you know, talked to a few people and, psychologists and all that, and they, you know, they talked to me about it and basically said the same thing that you're telling me. Yeah, but why do you need psychologists or psycholo psychiatrists to figure this uh, out? I don't know. I, I have to vent that. I mean, it was, it was just a big shock. I mean, I've, you know, I've never thought anything like that. What well, was happen. shocking about it? She said, I'm going to kill myself. You said, okay, goodbye, and then she killed herself. Yeah, yeah. What was shocking about it? Just the whole, you know, the whole... Everything about it was just, I, I just, I was in disbelief for, for the longest time. But she time. told you she was going to do it. What's that? She told you she was going to do it. Yeah, you know, she said it before, too, and that's why I just didn't take it to the heart, you know. And, and so if you, knew, I, if you knew that she was really going to do it, would you have gone back with her? No, of course not. So then it really has nothing to do with you, does it? No, no, it doesn't. And it never did? No, no, not, not that I, uh, not that, you know, that I've been thinking about it, like I said, and, you know, not now I see the big picture and, and everything makes sense, so. No, I, Patrick, thank you. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5-800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, Mark on the Tom Likas show. Hey, how you doing, Tom? I'm okay. Well, uh, my, my story is a little bit different. I'm actually on the other end of the spectrum here. Um, I'm actually the fool that was, you know, crying out for attention, you know, and actually listening to these stories now it just makes me feel like such an ass. And the uh, story goes that uh, me and my sweetheart were together for now for like uh, about 15 years or so. I'm 30 now. And uh, when, when she got to New York, of all places, you know, and then she started making that money, I no longer was, you know, in her, uh, you know, in, in, her, in her vision. So, uh, you know, she started to, dating out, started to date outside and whatnot. And uh, I saw this happening, and, and I just didn't know what else to do. You know, I was out crying for, for attention. I had... I didn't know what else to do, man. So I started to to play the card, you know, to uh, to just try to like uh, 
you know, off myself and tell her about it, you know? It was just the, the worst thing. I would cry you know, over the phone, you know, oh. staring out a bottle of pills and like, well, I'm going to kill myself. What a pussy. Yeah, man, and she was on the other end of the line just, you know, oh, you know what? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm late for dinner. I got to go. I got to go for dinner. I can't handle this. And I would, like, she would hang up on me, and I would still call back. And I would say, if you hang up again, I'm really going to do it this time. And she's like, what do you want me to do? You need some help. And then she would hang up again. And I would call back again. And, you know, just like, what an idiot, man. You know, I even, like, tried uh, doing it, like, you know, offering myself with, uh, you know, using hard drugs, heroin and whatnot, you know. And it just, uh, you know, it didn't pan out right. So, uh, you know, like, uh, next thing you know, I just... Uh, Ended up like you know, um, hopping on a plane back here, back back to LA, uh, just out of my mind. I just I don't even know how I got here. You know, it was just uh, pretty bad, pretty sad, man. But it's just uh, it, it definitely is just a cry for attention, man. You just really want to. Uh, you have nothing else, you know, to to do. You you just have no way to get through the, to these people. So it just means you're pathetic. Yeah, it really does, man. I I, 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 I mean, this was already like some time ago, but at the time, you just can't believe it, man. I was lost. I had I had nothing to hold on to, and then this was like the love of my life. I would do anything for this person. and That's uh, because you had nothing going in your life. No, I didn't. I did not, man. I didn't. I, I didn't. This is all I had was her. I made her life my own. I did whatever she, you know, would say, whatever she would do. Oh, okay, yes. Yes, honey. Yes, dear. Whatever you want. Yes, I'd bend over backwards for it, you know, for her. And uh, when when that carpet was, you know, taken from under me, I just left free falling in. Like, wow, this is it. I can't do anything. I can't go on. I can't live. I got to do this. And I tried and I tried and I tried. And it just doesn't work, man. The more you do that, the, the worse it gets. You know, the more the more like disgusting you seem to get to these people. You know. They just like look at you like, oh my God, dude, this guy is really pathetic. Like, you know, like what a pussy. I I thought I was actually like, you know, doing something positive here, trying to, you know, I was actually getting her attention. Yeah, right. You know, I'm actually pushing her away the further. And I didn't realize it at the time, you know. But uh, now, you know, this is this is coming down. You know, my wounds have healed, but. It was quite, you know, it's quite bad for the people to go through this. Man, really if you crazy. had your own life together, you wouldn't be in that position. Lynn, you're on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm okay, and, Lynn. And I do care. <laughs> oh, good. Good. Hey, um, I work for a very large uh, police department here in Southern California, and we get a lot of calls of people wanting to commit suicide. And I have to tell you... <laughs> Nine times out of ten is nothing. I have not been on a call where somebody actually did it. And it's yeah, just, why do they call you? I know exactly. <laughs> or you know what night? You know what night? You know what Nike once said: "Just do it." Yeah, exactly. And you know what's really sad is that you know usually it's the boyfriend calling or the girlfriend calling saying, "Hey, so and so's going to do it this time." I know they are, and and nine times out of ten, they you know like I said, actually for me, ten times out of ten they haven't, and it's kind of a waste of time for us. And uh, we feel like we're going on a call that just is a big waste of time. But Outrageous. And I, I can just, yeah. And I can tell you, uh, I actually had it happen to me as well. Um, the guy I was breaking up with did the same thing. As we're breaking up, oh, I can't live. I'm going to kill myself, all this. And I said, hey, you know what? That's a problem. So instead of taking it as my problem, I handed that problem to his family, which was the worst thing. He didn't want that. He really didn't want his family to find out he was feeling that way. But as soon as I told him, I didn't have any more responsibility after that. It was theirs, not mine. So that would be my. You shouldn't have had to do that much. I, you know, and I'm a caring person, so I did. But you're right; I shouldn't have had to do anything about it. But but it wasn't my problem; it was theirs. No doubt about it. Definitely. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Appreciate the call. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. You're a show streaming live over the internet. Just go to BlowMeUpTom.com and click on the Listen Live button. The Tom Likas Show.